CataractCoach.com. Resident Case 120 is great. This young surgeon from Romania is truly excelling, and so can you. Let's watch and learn from this case together. Now, we've got the video at three times normal speed, so it's sped up a little bit. Now, here comes the main incision. Looks pretty reasonable. I like that. Barely nicking the limbal vessels, which we also like. Here comes the side port or presentesis. So, surgeon is sitting superiorly here. And then now coming, maybe some anesthetic going inside the eye. There we go. And then let's see our viscoelastic going in as well. Here comes your viscoelastic. There we go. Nice, good wave. And let's see the rexes. Yeah, the video is definitely sped up, so that's okay. Remember, I know my audience. You guys don't want to sit through a long video. Now, you could use the YouTube function right there and put it at half speed or slower speed, even a quarter speed if you wanted to. Now, here's the rexes. I like that you're using just the forceps. Good pivoting technique here. Pivot, pivot, pivot. That looks pretty good. Getting that going around. There you go. That's pretty reasonable. Now, your resident case, so it's not centered up here. You can center up a little bit more. There we go. See, look at the, look at the field. Look where the re light is of the microscope. You want the eye to stay in the center of that. There we go. Good job. Hydro dissection there. Another one. Another wave over on this side. And a little bit more here. And then let's see. Does it rotate? Remember, if it does not spin, you will not win. So maybe it rotated a little bit. We'll find out. Here comes a phaco probe going inside the eye. Looks like the, the smaller sleeve, the, the pink sleeve is a 2.2 maybe, 2.4, somewhere in that range. And let's see, okay, groove down the middle. We like that. Good looking groove. I like that the eye's in focus. It's reasonably centered. Pretty good job there. I like that so far. So, so far, I really like the case. If you want to, and you're still learning, you may want to even just widen up the groove. It kind of makes it easier sometimes to have smaller halves. And now let's take a look. Here comes a chopper. Maybe get a crack propagate it down the middle there. There it is. Propagate it fully. Maybe do one more split there at the end. Yep. And now you're getting it rotated slowly. Okay. Divide and conquer maybe. Yep. A little bit of divide and conquer. That's okay too. That looks good. A little bit of a groove there. Again, center up the scope here a little bit, a little bit off our screen. So that's been split. Now you're going to take out a quarter. You're going to rotate it again. Now rotate it again. That looks good. And then here's another little groove, just a little bit more. And you can split that up. So it's a nice looking divide and conquer case. Now, if you want to learn how to do good cataract surgery as a resident, most residents start off with divide and conquer. Now, I don't like this idea of taking the left hand out of the eye because that left hand is important because you're going to be a chop surgeon at some point and you need to be able to use both hands inside the eye. So you don't need two hands on the phaco probe. Only one hand on the phaco probe is needed. Again, taking these pieces out, here's where a chopper would have been helpful to rotate the pieces around. Here comes the second quadrant. That looks great. And then third and fourth quadrant, getting it rotated around and, re and take these out nice and easy. Again, beautifully done. So the video in real time was about 15, 16, 17 minutes, which is very good for about case 120. So this is where you need to be. Just, dear resident, you're doing a fantastic job. You got to keep up the good work. Again, I would, at this point, I think you need to transition to stop and chop. So your, your divide and conquer technique is good. It looks fine. But it's time for you to learn stop and chop. Maybe do that for a few dozen cases, maybe 50 or 100 cases, and then transition to chop as well. You definitely need to learn how to do all the techniques of nuclear practice, and then you can tailor to whatever patient you like. And here comes an epinuclear shell, nicely done with just low vacuum. Be careful, careful, careful. Nice, beautiful. Hey, let me tell you about retina rounds. If you're a resident, listen, as a resident, you have to know this material. Retina rounds is critical material that I will help you excel in your residency and fellowship. It's material you need to know. Even if you love cataracts more than anything else, I am with you, but you got to check it out. Now, cortex removal here. Nice uh, technique. That looks good. Let's see how the sub incisional is done. That's going to be the tricky one. So again, nicely just dissecting that up. You may want to do a little more hydrodissection next time. It may rotate the nucleus a little bit more. That rotation of the nucleus and more hydrodissection may leave you with less cortex here at the end. I mean, obviously, the extreme example would be, you know, the Rosatelli spin, which really removes a lot of the cortex. But here, taking your time, this is a good technique. Residents often also like to use a bimanual approach. But you notice in my videos, I don't often use a bimanual approach for cortex removal. I just use the coaxial. And I do it because I just, I'm used to it, I like it, and also I don't have to make the extra incision. So if you don't need to make an extra incision, well, then it's easier. But sometimes people have an easier time accessing areas like the sub-incisional part if they're doing by manual. Now, that looks like a beautiful rexus, by the way. Here comes some viscoelastic to fill up the capsule bag. And let's see the lens going in. Here comes the lens. And it's gonna, it looks like a single piece of acrylic lens. Get that delivered in the capsule bag. Very nice. Get that opened up nice and easy. Oh, he's opening it up and positioning it with the eye probe. Okay, I like that. Save a step. Look at the rexes now. Rexes overlaps the optic very nicely, 360 degrees. 
That is fantastic. Again, K is 120. You need to learn how to go behind the optic a little bit. That's a little too much hydration for me. That's going to induce astigmatism. But it's only temporary. It'll be fine. Beautiful case. You did a fantastic job. Keep up the good work. And remember, now's the time for you to advance to stop and chop. And remember, if you're a resident, check out our great material, learning material, books, curriculum, all that stuff on cataractcoach.com. And you have to subscribe to retinarounds.com as well.